Hello and welcome to Mindful Conversation with Dr. Dawood Vaid. And I hope you're enjoying the series. It's all about education, everything education under the sun. And today is a topic that is the hottest topic in the current education scenario about micro schools. Yes, the concept of micro schooling are tiny schools that are springing up across. It's a beautiful concept. And today we'll take 10 questions, hopefully, on this idea of what a micro school is about. Question number one, what is the fundamental difference between a micro school and a traditional school? Last time also I spoke about a traditional school in the true sense of the world that we grew up in is a school with a large campus, brick and mortar, classrooms divided from senior kg to class 10 or class 12. Each class is having a bench, a desk, a whiteboard or a blackboard and textbooks. The idea is you have a school bus that picks you up. You have a school that is more like an external manager for your child. You come home, probably go to tuition. This is what a traditional school is. It's also a board centric school. So you have a state board, you have a CBSC, you have an international board. This is how we define a traditional school. And yes, do not forget, forget the, the, you know, the school bell yeah? and the principal's room and maybe a little bit of parent teacher meetings, everything that a school incorporates. A micro school is a mini version of everything except the frills. If you know what Marie Kondo says about minimalistic living, this is a Marie Kondo version of what a school should be. This is a school which is much smaller. It's a dream passion project for someone who wishes to have a school of creativity, school of entrepreneurship, school of global goals, school of music. And this is what a micro school is. It's a school with definitely less number of students. There is no traditional class 1 to 10. There might be a group that is collectively studying a group A, which is 1 and 2, group B, which is 3 and 4. And it could be 5 classes instead of 10. A, a board which is agnostic of the regular board because you can take up a maths from CBSC and a writing skill from ICSC and an entrepreneurship from IB. That's what a micro school is. A micro school is similar to a McDonald's, which is in your vicinity. There might be a school bus or a carpooling, but it's a very relaxed school. There are a lot of every changes is incorporated, which is very local. The cuisine, the baking concepts, guests coming in, the colors in a school, a school that is where you and I would love to belong to. This is the idea of a micro school. Question number two, what are the 21st century skills that are best positioned for a micro school. Trust me, when I speak of skills, I can do an hour long session. But one of the most major skills that are devoid in our journal schools is a school of problem solving. You know, because there's so much of rote learning, there's so much of spoon feeding, a micro school in that way is very, very, you know, problem centric where a child is solving a problem. I, I don't hope you don't understand that. The child knows to take decisions. What do I do? This is also a school where there is a lot of communication skills happening in a child. A school of empathy because you can take up a subject, something like as simple as stray dogs in your area, and then you can do an entire case study on it. There are schools where we speak specifically about two very important emotions, stress, which is the major issue in today's time. This is a school that deals with depression and mental health on a priority. Then there are emotional EQ, Daniel Goldman speaks about emotional intelligence, a school where it is very clear, a principal can view five classes in the same go, a school we may not have walls but glasses. These are the skills that a micro school incorporates in. Number three, how do micro schools support individualized learning plans for students? Very, very clear idea. The idea of micro school is a school which doesn't have 60 students in one classroom. I'm part of a micro school called the Golden Sparrow Academy. And my daughter says while she was in De Delhi public, she said my one class has 60 students. Today, the entire school has 60 students. It's nothing to be proud or comparative stuff. It is when a child is very individualistic. There are 12 students in a classroom. So the teacher knows not only their names, which is the least you expected to know, their perks, their behavior, their hobbies, their personalities. And this is a way a child is teaching. So you might teach a naturalistic learner or a kinesthetic learner and you incorporate topics like saving tiger or just understanding how a PBL lesson of football is taking place. This is a school where the child gives an opinion on what movies to watch together because micro schools are very flexible. Remember, 
when an organization is very large even an hr policy takes time the red tape is up when an organization is small it's quicker and that's what a micro school attempts to do question number four what role does technology play in functioning of a micro school wonderful you know there is a book by sal khan the khan academy founder he talks about one world school micro schools necessarily are networking you know a part of micro school is you do a lot of online exchange program student exchange program because you're small you're you know you're desiring to go out in fact there is one of the statement it says a school should be in a bazaar not in an isolated area so the micro schools are very aloof from a traditional gurukul like system which is inside the bustling hustling of a city you could be in kolkata lucknow or mumbai but you are in the center of a city so you are not taking a 10 acre land outside which is a great idea the ashram schools the valley schools are something on those lines micro schools are mini version of that, that same idea and it focuses on the area around so you go home it's not a boarding school it's a physical school where students interact with everything around them Question number five: Why are micro school often considered a modern version of one room school houses? Number one: Well, one room school houses is a very demeaning term. I call it the modern day guru schools. I have one, except the the banyan tree is not there, but the teachers are the gurus. I grew up, you know, and my father took me to a place called Shanti Niketan, where our, you know, Guru Dev Ramendra Tagore, our national anthem, is a gift from him, which is when an idea developed. micro schools are mini cocoons ecosystems within an ecosystem so that is the idea of using the concept where you will network with others micro schools don't hesitate to use linkedin to reach out to guests technology and social media are part of their reach out if there is a kala ghoda or a literature festival the schools will be the first ones from comic con to meepan con they will use technology they will connect with students they'll go out and that is what a micro school does Question number six: What is a typical teacher to student ratio in a micro school? Absolutely simple. Ideally, it's one is to twelve. Twelve is a great number. Well, that's why we have twelve months of the year. But you know, anything that goes beyond twelve, fifteen, acceptable. But then suddenly to have forty students in a classroom with one teacher, even if there's a helper around, it is such a clerical system of schooling. We still continue. Schools are no more the factories. Covid has taught us that online learning is possible. Micro school incorporates every single model. The new word is digital, physical and digital. Micro school something in Delhi would be an excellent idea. Why? Because of the smog, the pollution, the child may not be able to travel. If it's a monsoon affected area or floods are there on an area which is little interiors, you need micro schools which are closer. and then you can monitor it so a teacher is not just necessary a mentor but as a guru a facilitator a teacher has multiple roles and that brings me to a very interesting question so i'll give you some we we finished six good questions let me make four easy lighter questions on micro school with you number 1 right in a micro school does a teacher have more roles than a swiss army knife Well if you have seen a swiss army knife there is a clipper there is a cutter there is a holder there is every single including a knife yes micro school teachers are like the durga with so many hands and you can do multiple roles which is what we want a teacher to be a bed is a qualification but that doesn't make you a good teacher right you can be an excellent teacher by being an architecture student a law student an engineering student like me and a lot of my friends who have gone into and i think dentists make great teachers i know two specific school owners who are dentists so a micro school teacher yes has multiple roles but primarily you'll also divide the roles so language teacher will not learn and teach mathematics but there will be specific stem teachers but yes they will be doing a multiple role including that of a counselor if a micro school were a cafe would it be bustling starbucks or a cozy coffee shop somewhere well i don't know if a starbucks or ccd is your idea third wave but any barista will tell you a coffee shop is your third space that's what starbucks promotes itself with right it's a space which is not your home and office but a third space where you can come a micro school is that third space it is not home we don't want them to feel like home and come in your pajamas there is a discipline there is a routine there is a time table do not think that micro school means nothing schooling no there is something called freedom with fences but then there is a liberty the creativity the artistic expression of what a coffee shop conversation should look like so yes micro school is your cafe next door 
The ninth question, micro schools are small but mighty. Can they pack a punch big enough to reshape traditional education? That's a question only one decade will tell us. The idea of micro schools started with the idea of Sunday schools. When the Jewish immigrants went to United States, they realized that the values, ethics were not met with the new culture they have come up with. Same thing with the Chinese people and there is a beautiful book called the Tiger Mom. And that is when the idea of these small Sunday classes started happening. It could be in a church or it could be in a local center or a library. Micro schools are an adaptation of that where it becomes more cosmopolitan, more secular, more fun filled. But it will create a dent, as Steve Jobs says, in the traditional schooling and pack a punch for sure, but we're not fighting a traditional school. Sometimes you need those epic schools, you need the legacy schools, and there's some amazing school heads, but a micro school is better managed because it's smaller and more activity around it. My final question for this episode, and we have one more coming of micro school, is if a student in a micro school created their own dress code, would it be pajamas or superhero costume? As I said, I think a micro school is between a relaxed and a very rigid one. It's a school where a child feels good. So if you come to Golden Sparrow Academy and I think I should show you my uniform. It's a lovely black t-shirt where you actually show them the SDG goals, which is what this school stands for. But if a child has to make, well, comic cons are fine. We did a tinkle and a supandi and a shikari sambu and somewhere between Marvels and DC characters. But the school where jeans and shorts are just as much appreciated where a suit and a tie is. It's your school. That is why it is micro, but it is strong. Good luck and join us.